fear of a black politician. Let's talk about it. feared type of people in the United States is the black politician. The power structure does not like black politicians. The Hispanic community doesn't like black politicians. And black people do not support black politicians as much as they should. You know, when you live in these big cities, or even in small cities, you have to realize that the money 
goes in for taxes, it goes all the way up to the federal and state government. And then that money is allocated back down to cities and neighborhoods. And if you don't have a strong political structure, you have no way of monitoring your own tax dollars to make sure they're spent adequately in your community. If you don't have a strong political structure to represent your people, you have no chances of making any progress, not only in the United States, but anywhere. You know, for the Pan-Africans, one of the problems with Pan-Africanism is it doesn't teach to prepare now so that if you do go to Africa, you already have some structure. You can't wait to have structure. You have to have structure wherever you're at. During the 70s and 80s and even the 90s, black people did a lot of great moves politically and we put a lot of people in office. But we didn't keep the pressure up. And some of these people ended up being indicted, arrested, harassed. There was a witch hunt out for black politicians. Because you see in politics, when you're a young politician and you come into politics, the older politicians let you know all the different dirt that they're doing. But they don't give you the specifics on who they're doing dirt with but they are able to watch you and have all the specifics of the dirt you're doing. So politicians come in, do their dirt, and when they fall out of favor with the older politicians, the older politicians feed them to the feds and have them locked up for something that we all know that most of them are doing. You know, most of them are doing, but it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And, yellow, uh, the, and the younger politicians they're able to prove what they're doing because they're young and just getting in the game and don't know how to cheat. But everybody's doing it and that's what gives the younger politicians the idea to cheat. Now what we have to do now, we have to start going to the next level and putting people in office that are fair, that are decent, that have the best interests for black people. We have to start sending them to college with that mentality. We can't wait until somebody goes to college and then they get into politics and then we find out who they are and then we support them. We have to do just like the mafia did. The mafia actually sent their own kids and relatives and friends to school to become the lawyers, the bankers, and the politicians. You have to prime them and send them. So we have to send people that are conscious into these systems to become politicians and we have to buck the system instead of fence straddling. What do I mean by that? It's time for us to be able to go into politics, into business, and be ourselves. We shouldn't emulate a European to get in power. You know, a lot of people talked about Barack Obama becoming the first black president. But people overlooked his name, though. The name Barack Obama, for somebody with that name to become president, that was a big move in our favor to open it up for a more Afrocentric type of political structure. You see, when you set up a political party, when you set up a voter's block, and you set up these big political structures, no one can tell you what to do because it's your political structure. And as long as you all support your own political structure, then you push that structure the direction you want it to go. And all you have to do is you don't have to worry about the other politicians. All you have to do is build with your constituents. So you have to work with the black community to get their support to support your new ideology, a pro-black, positive-minded politician, not a politician 
You don't, we don't have to keep being politicians to emulate Europeans. We don't have to keep doing that. And we have to make these moves. Look how the Supreme Court upheld the fact that jobs could deny you because you got dreadlocks. Well, that's because the conscious people are not putting people in office so we're not having any influence on the Supreme Court. We're not having any influence on the police department. We're not having any influence on city, state, or federal government. It's really time for us to build on our own with our own mentality. And you can build right here in this country if you have some unity. And this is why politics is so important because politics creates unity. I can't say this enough. It creates a movement. It creates unity. The idea that you can get a bunch of black people to do anything without having some type of direction is impossible. And you can't have a direction without some type of structure, some type of leadership. And the best leadership is a political leadership. People will always say, oh, the politicians ain't going to do nothing and this and that. See, the same old stupid stuff people keep saying over and over again. If you're sending black politicians in there and then they're not doing what you want them to do, that means the black politicians, you're sending the wrong black politicians. It doesn't mean stop sending politicians. That means prime some younger politicians and send somebody that's going to do what's right. And then if you stick together, you can put pressure on these politicians when they don't do what you want them to do. You can go and demand things while they're in office so that the other politicians can see that this person is demanding something. This is where black people made a horrible mistake with Obama. Every black person that say Obama didn't do nothing for black people, it's that person that's saying that the one that didn't do nothing for black people because that person don't know politics. When Obama gets in office as a Democrat, he represents the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party wants votes. All the different Democrats need votes, too. They can't just make it off of his endorsement. They have to go back to their states and cities and get votes. So if a lot of people start to ask Obama, do this, do this, do that, that equals a lot of votes. But you got to be a lot of you and you got to stick together and make your demands a voting block. So now when these politicians see this big black voting block saying, Obama, we want this and we want that, this, the rest of the white politicians and politicians in Washington will be afraid because they're not going to get that vote unless they support him and what you ask for. So in other words, when Obama goes to do something for black people, he can't do nothing for you unless it's shown that you are out there in big numbers and that's why it's being done, that you're demanding that being done. Then the other politicians see you. It's never based on him. It's based on your demands. I had a person say, what did Obama do for black people? And I'm like, what did black people ask for? What do you mean, what did Obama do for black people? I think, and this is why we need politics, because right now, without us having more political people involved with us, I'm going to be honest with you. Black people don't even know anything about politics, especially the black conscious community. For them, for the black conscious community to be pretending that they're the educated, well-read, scholarly leader, they are a disgrace because they have not taught black people anything about politics. Anytime you think that a president can get in office and can do stuff for you, just do stuff out the blue, because that's what that question means. Like a guy who believes I can become president and I can just go and I can just start doing things. Doing what? I can't do anything unless the votes are there. Once I get in office, you can't just stop once I get in office. And that's exactly what black people did. Whereas Hispanics, they don't stop. Homosexuals, they don't stop. They lobby. They have their voter block. They keep asking, 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 asking while the person in office. 
Black people didn't ask for anything. Nothing. So it's really black people that shot their own self in the foot and didn't make no demands and didn't make it known that people wouldn't get voted in if they didn't do what they wanted. Obama won two times, right? How much pressure did you all put on him before he won the second term? How much pressure did you put on the other politicians? You know why black people don't go vote for the midterms? Because we don't have enough politicians running during the midterm. Let's say I'm Obama. And let's use me in the, in the, in the sense of basketball. I'm a great politician like Obama. You put me on the basketball team, right? Let me ask you something. If you put me on the basketball team and I'm Obama and I'm the great, I'm great, and you put me on the team, I'm a great player, can I, can I win by myself? Seriously. Can I go get an NBA championship just me? No. What do you have to do? You have to build a team, right? You have to give me some support, right? So now every black person that's got all this negative shit to say about Obama, I want to ask you, what kind of support did you send your brother? None. You didn't send him no support. Not only did you not send him no support, guess what? You ain't no support. You're not a politician. You're not interested in taking your ass to college to learn political science and start running for office to get to the position to do something for black people. So how realistic are you? when you want to criticize President Obama, but you yourself can never fantasize or phantom of the idea of you running for president or mayor or governor. That's some fake shit right there. Because unless you have other politicians, other senators and congressmen what the fuck did you think he was going to be able to do? That's why I say comprehension is at an all-time low. It's too much Google uh, historians and Google scholars. And I'm telling you, if you black people don't really wake up and come into the real world and stop with all this fantasy shit, you ain't got a chance in hell. You can always say, Oh, these politicians ain't going to do nothing for us. It's easier to say that than to show me what is going to do something for us. You don't know. You don't know. You don't have anything that can do anything for us. This is a fact. This is a fact. There's no person that can criticize Obama that's got nothing for you all. Nothing. They have nothing. Nothing more than a YouTube comment and a Twitter tweet. That's it. Them themselves, they couldn't even run a fucking grocery store not a long run for president. You understand what I'm saying? Most of the people that criticize Obama, what do they run? Nothing. Nothing. Because you get to the point you don't understand politics. So what did you do? There was a movement. And you're so fucked up that I see black people that don't even recognize the movement. This is how fucked up you are. I have black people that live in bumfuck Egypt trying to tell me here in a major metropolitan city like Chicago that there was no movement to put him in office from black people. And I'm thinking you live in bumfuck fucking Egypt. You, how the fuck do you even know? How do you know? And you show me somebody in Chicago that say that, I guarantee you they're a low life. They're not involved with any goddamn thing. Anybody that has any kind of business sense or any type of movement around in this city seen the movement. It was a whole different movement. That was the first time a president used social media and used all the different things that they got now. I mean, he did some shit that now knew that the younger white politicians just stole his motherfucking shit and doing his shit to get in office. You know, the man was slick. He had a slick team to work to get him in there. Anybody say, no, nah, somebody else put him in there, don't know what the fuck they talking about. Most of, most of the motherfuckers that say negative shit about that situation, they don't even know nothing about when he ran for Senate. How can you come in in the middle of a story and think you know what the fuck you're talking about? 
I mean, this story started way before he ran for president. It started when we put him in the Senate. Somebody gonna say, y'all didn't put him in the Senate. How you know? How you know? Are you sure we didn't put him in the Senate? Are you sure that black politicians and black people in Chicago, you sure we didn't mold him and put him in the Senate? Chicago, we build. But see, people knock the wind out the cell. So after we built the movement, he was just at the top of the movement. Once he got in there, we could have kept the movement going. We could have put more people in more positions. But the haters, they hate against their own brother. They wanted to get something because they had closed mouths and didn't get fed. And so then they wanted to cry like some little bitches. Never asked for nothing. Never did nothing. I watched the whole process. Black people wasn't on shit for the whole eight years Obama was in office. The masses of black people in America wasn't on shit. You know, you want to give him a report card. What about you black people? What kind of political report card should you get? You motherfuckers get an F. You did nothing. Absolutely nothing. In the midterms, your ass didn't even fucking give him no help. You let them go put all the Republicans in there. And they went and then they blocked everything. Once they blocked him, see, it was a slick move. Once the whites put all them races in there and blocked him and had him tied up where he, instead of him doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things real quick, he tried to do one thing and take forever, forever. He tried to do the second thing and take forever. So they bogged him down. The eight years was over. Black people didn't do shit. Didn't do nothing. And a lot of the states, I'll call y'all ass out. Y'all didn't even go out and vote all in Georgia and places like that at the midterm. Man, voter turnout was low than a motherfucker. So if you're not going to turn out, if you're not going to gather for event one, you're not going to gather for event two, event three, event four, event five. So there's other young black politicians that lost out because you all knocked the wind out the cell. You didn't just hurt Obama with that negative shit. That's the part I'm really going to beat that drum heavy. You hurt the movement we built that put him in there. That's what you hurt. Seriously. And every black person that's always got something to say bad about Obama, seriously, they shouldn't even be considered to be anything positive for black people. They negative. They should be, they should have to run their fucking resume. You know, it gets to the point where, you know, you're going to have to run your resume for you be talking all this shit. You know, what the fuck have you done? You know, you won't even run for the motherfucking local neighborhood dog catcher, not alone, no big office like that. We got to get to the point where we stay united and working to get things done. We got to keep our eye on the prize. You know, when you get a politician in office, you're not supposed to sit back looking and try to see what he's going to do for you. You're supposed to get another one and another one and another one and another one. You don't just put one politician in the office and then sit back. You don't sit back. That's why people say, what did he do for us? You know why they say, what did Obama do for us? Because they ain't got no specific demands. So they use a blank statement, what? Be more specific, motherfucker. What did you want him to do? Oh, you didn't want him to do nothing. You didn't want him to do nothing. That's why you keep saying what? You know what he did for you? He did what you asked for. I mean, and that goes for everybody. That goes for all the religious groups and everybody. They didn't, they didn't step up. They didn't step up. It's time. Listen, if you already in a system... You can't be talking no dream world shit. We can't sit here and not have our streets paved and not be getting city contracts and not get, be getting jobs, government jobs and shit like that waiting on for a fucking Marcus Garvey dream of repatriation. What we gonna do in the motherfucking meantime, in between time? What we gonna do now until all of that? I always hear the talk. We don't need this, we don't need that, we don't need this, we don't need to do that. In the meantime, property taxes coming in, shit coming in now, though. So every time you talking about this shit we need to do, I'm like, give me a date, motherfucker. 
And when is that going to happen? It's not. And then you keep saying we. What we? It's never going to be no we because we're not organized. And the only organization that builds a we is a political fucking structure. Without a political structure, there's no we. You're never going to have no we as Hebrews because it's always going to be somebody that's going to be a Muslim and it's always going to be somebody to be an atheist and a Pan-African, so that ain't going to never be we. The only we there's going to be is when you realize that we all need running water, we all need food, we all need to make sure our taxes get paid to take care of what we have to take care of. We all need good air quality. We all need jobs, income, housing, stores in our community so we don't be living in food deserts. These are political things. I don't know what the fuck you think this is. Everything we need and everything we need to do is done through politics, including business. There's a lot of talk about business. Yeah, we need business. But we're not going to have no business without no politics. Politicians set the Koreans up to control the hair care industry so that black people that go into the hair care industry got to go buy the shit from Koreans and Koreans won't even sell to the black men and women that want to do hair care problems. This is all done through politics. Politicians are giving Hispanics that's coming from Mexico and Guatemala and everywhere, they're giving them money to buy houses. You all don't even know that because you're not politically connected. You don't have no, no force in there. No, we should have got more people in office instead of just Obama. That We fucked that up. We were supposed to keep pushing. When the midterms came, it should have been 25 new black people. One fucking election. It's a fact. It's a fact. But somebody going to come to me with a Malcolm X shirt on telling me we don't need no politics. And Malcolm said we need to battle out a bullet. And you, nigga, you ain't shooting or voting. And that whole statement was weak. But that was way back then, so you give a brother respect. He wasn't advanced like now, but the reality is, God damn it, the ballot and the bullet, both of them is political. You ain't got no military without politics either. And you ain't got no fucking military without politics. Everything you're doing is po political, okay? The Black Panthers was a political group, whether they know it or not. Every group you all got out there, that is politics. That is politics. I don't know what you think it is. Everything in these systems work on politics. From here to Zimbabwe, it's all politics. Soon as they have elections in Africa, it's some of the biggest news in the world. People get shot, all type of shit happen around these elections because politics are important. And when you don't start becoming a mass uh, uh, promoter of a lot of politicians that's looking in your be behalf, to look to do things in your favor and if you don't mold them and actually send them to school then what can you say so that's why i call this the fear of a black politician because black people scared of politics too scary scared of politics and talk too goddamn much about a bunch of unnecessary shit and a bunch of dream shit but won't get off their asses and start to say hey let us, we're going to have to prime somebody. Okay, you want to say politicians don't do what we want them to do. That's because you ain't primed the motherfuckers, though. You ain't primed them. That's supposed to be your son. Then you know he's going to do what you want him to do. Where the Kennedys came from? They came from the mob. Their daddy was a mobster. And he put them in there. And they were supposed to do what their daddy wanted them to do. Robert fucked that up. But they still went in there and they kept white supremacy where it was supposed to go. They did what white people needed to be done. That black people, you're going to have to do what black people want done. If not, you're going to look up and the Hispanic politician is going to slowly move in and move in and move in. And they're going to have everything and you're going to be back even further. I'm here in Chicago. Don't talk no shit. I'm telling you. The Hispanic politicians is trying to move up here. They're trying to run for mayor and every damn thing. Every time we get somebody run for mayor, we get five or six black dudes run against one white mayor. And they keep wondering why the white mayor win. It's because these black dudes 
Some of them are paid by the mayor to run, so our vote be split up because we don't got no politics. But if we had politics here, we would call all them black dudes in there and we would tell four of them motherfuckers to sit the fuck down. And it wouldn't be a request, it'd be a demand. Sit the fuck down, we fucking with dude, we not fucking with y'all. So stop running. And then we would be organized and say, we not giving these four motherfuckers no votes. We voting for this one. So he can win. We're not going to split our vote and keep losing and keep losing and keep losing. You know, so it's time to start taking the positivity into the system. Because the system is running everything. And so, like I always say, I don't believe in running from Babylon. I believe in conquering Babylon and changing that shit to where the fuck we want it to be. And we can't run. You can run, but you can't hide. We got to face this shit head on. It's a system. It's a structure that we already under. So people talking all this shit like we not under a structure. We already under a structure. Go pull your money out your pocket right now and look on it. Who's on there? It ain't you. Who printing it? It ain't you. Your lights on? Who got your lights on? Not you. You got heat? Who got your heat on? Not you. I mean, it's time to take it to the next level and start pushing our children to go into what we need. And what do we need? We need medical. We need medical. We got to be able to take care of ourselves medically. We need politicians. We need police and firemen. We need school teachers. These are the people that will support the black business. What good is it to open black business when you don't have a lot of well-paid, well-educated black people that can come spend money at the black business? We have to start pushing our children to go into what we need. I remember when I was young, you would always see the white cartoons and white TV shows, and they always push for their kids to be what? A doctor or a lawyer. And look how fucked up we is with all these European lawyers that control everything, and you black and you poor, and you got a lawsuit, and they won't even take your motherfucking lawsuit unless it becomes some national media. But black people got how many lawsuits we ain't never been able to go follow through on because we ain't connected. Because we ain't got the complexion for the protection. You know, it's time to not be conscious and awake and pull away. It's time to be conscious and awake and go in. Go in. It's time for somebody to get up there and run for president that got some dreadlocks, a black woman that got natural hair. That's what time it is. It's time to take our thing to where we want to take it and stand up for our people and be on the forefront. It, we can't sit back. You can't be conscious and have black people's best interests and sit back and let other black people that don't have black people's best interests Go and be all the politicians while you don't. You can't do that. You got to go compete with them and push them out the way. And let people know, no, I'm the one. And I'm not saying you should have been doing it, but I'm saying now is the time. You see, look at Colin Kaepernick. Okay, you see that energy? Okay, that energy is growing. People is looking for somebody going to stand up. Right now, we can prime our children and prime our young people. Go into politics. Go into government. You can't let somebody keep controlling your government. We got Rahm Emanuel here controlling black people in Chicago. He don't give a damn about black people in Chicago. Everything he do, he do for the Jewish community and for the white community. He ain't doing nothing for black people, seriously, but taxing the shit out of us. We paying more taxes than them. White people be lying all the time. We pay way more taxes than them. We pay more for the shit. We pay more for rent and everything. We pay more for rent in a raggedy place than they pay for some nicer places. This is a fact. 
If we don't pay more, we pay too much compared to what they got. You be living in some raggedy shit for twelve, eight, nine, ten, twelve hundred dollars a month. They living in a real nice place, seventeen, two thousand. But look how much money they making. And then some of their people own the place where you live. So in a lot of places where black people live, we paying the taxes or we paying the rent. And the rent goes out to who whatever white person owns the building. And then that goes on their taxes. So then they get better schools from your money. Your money is going to somebody because you don't own this shit. It's going to them. And then it's going to fix up their community. And ain't nothing, none of that money you're spending is going to coming back to fix your neighborhood. And you can't expect white people to take care of you. They ain't going to do it. You got to go and you got to stop fucking around with all this negativity, all this division, and all this fake ass motherfucking talk. And it's time to do. That's what time it is. It ain't time for all that. All this here shit all the time. It's time to do. It's time to get into the game. So, you know, talk to your children about politics. You know, we got to get we got to get more black politicians. You got to get your ass out here and vote. If you don't like the politician, then create the politician you like. Just don't say I don't like the politicians. OK, so what you going to do? So you don't like the politicians. You just going to live on the block and none of the money don't come down to you correctly. And you just going to live there and talk and dream about one day what? And then you're going to separate and then what? You got to go build a political structure instead of already having a political structure. You want to fight and rob and hate each other and think you can separate and then stop fighting and robbing and hate each other. Then stop fucking around being low lives, not taking shit to the next level. You got it's time. You got to take this shit to the next level. That's where we at right now. We got a lot of people talking shit, but they ain't got nothing. You know, in my world, Tavis Smiley and Cornel West, they should run for office or shut the fuck up. Just y'all just be on some fake shit. OK, y'all say this man didn't do the job right. Right. OK, nigga, go show us how it's done right. It's just like I'm in a band and you got the bass guitar and you playing a note wrong. I say, man, that don't sound right. Give me the bass. It go like this. But. It's limited on what I could say on how good he playing the bass. If I can't take that motherfucker and play it the right way, you know, come with something else. When you say, oh, this wasn't no good, you got to show me your shit. We got too many black people that know everything ain't no good, but that motherfuckers ain't doing no good they sell. They just professional showing how something else ain't no good. That shit got to end. Everybody going to have to lace up their boots and they're going to have to participate in the betterment of black people. You're not going to just get no pass because you call yourself super black XXX on motherfucking YouTube. That ain't going to get it. OK, we're going to need some real work done. And I ain't talking about standing on no corner hollering no motherfucking bullhorn. That ain't getting nobody nowhere. Now, some people say, well, shit, the Chinese ain't playing no political game. And look how good they doing, because the Chinese got China, motherfucker. We don't got Africa. Africa ain't supporting us. Africa ain't supporting us. Lil John went to Africa, build a goddamn school. Oprah, go to Africa, build a school. Umar talking about, he got to go to Africa, build a school. Every time, 50 Cent went to Africa, took all that over there trying to feed motherfuckers in Africa. It's a lot of billionaires and millionaires, blacks and Africans in Africa. How many of them have put one fucking penny into your black ass here in America? But every time you want to go and do something for motherfucking Africa, and Africa ain't doing shit for you. But when, when, these, when these Chinese here do shit for China, China reciprocate. Believe that. When these Koreans send money to Korea, Korea reciprocates. You know, it ain't enough just to be Black Lives Matter marching around. Black Lives Matter need to turn that into a serious political movement. They need to start running people for office. And they need to start using all them people they got to vote. Go down in these cities and vote and get these people in office. And once you get these people in office, go back and vote some more and some more and some more. OK, perfect example. I vote. I put you in office. You get in there. You want to be all flimsy. But I voted him, her, her, her. They behind you now saying, motherfucker, what you going to do? See, do this, do that. Now you got the opposition, all these white politicians. Well, if you just Obama by yourself, what the fuck you want them to do? 
You know, some of y'all is like the most fakest, unrealist niggas in the whole damn world. Here you said a man in there. I bet I bet the average one of you motherfuckers could not tell me how many white politicians were in office when Obama was in office. That's your homework. How many white politicians was in office when Obama was in office and how many black ones was in there? And then write that number down and then show me where that fucking number says he could do any goddamn thing. How many white people's in the Senate? How many white people's in the House of Representatives of Congress and all that shit? How many white military motherfuckers is it? All white. Thousands of them motherfuckers and just him. And you stupid enough to say what the fuck he did? We got to step our game up. Here in Chicago, when we had Harold Washington as mayor, things was a lot better for black people. That's a fact. As soon as they got him out of there, the pirates come. Stealing our cars, booting our cars, giving us more tickets than they get a white. You go in the black neighborhood, you see us more in the ticket place. You go in the white neighborhood, you can go right through line real quick. They ain't, they're not victimizing their own like they victimize us. That's because we ain't got no political backbone. We ain't got no political backbone. We don't got nobody in their face. See, it's like a boxing match. You just can't get out there and fight. You have to have your fighter train. We don't have enough black politicians to get in their face to make sure they do what the fuck they supposed to do. And we don't have enough righteous black politicians that we bought up from the beginning to go in there and check the fucked up black politicians. This is why you got fucked up black politicians because you don't know them. You didn't bring them in. The mafia bought their politicians in from fucking seventh and eighth grade. We never get the black conscious community doctor, the black conscious community architect, the black conscious community lawyer, politician. We don't got that. We don't have no black conscious professionals. You ain't noticed that? So you don't step your political game up. If you don't step your political game up, you can forget it. I don't know what you think you're going to do. Because... You know, especially the black conscious community, they some professional, we can't do this, we can't do that hers. That's all the fuck they do. They all they talk about is what you can't do. They ain't got no plans. Ain't nobody thinking on no grand scale. I'm trying to bring y'all up on the next level. Y'all still in the eighties. The black conscious community, as a matter of fact, you further back. Seriously, the black conscious community now in 2017 is more slow and further back than the black conscious community was in the 80s when we didn't even know it was a black conscious community. Way further back. You got less events, you have less events, you have less economical control of the events. Y your booths look like, you know, when they go out and they sell their stuff on their booths, that shit look horrible. It look like a broke, you know, it looks so fucked up. When you see, when you see the black conscious vendor him and her, they look a disgrace. They are the worst vendors in black people, in what black people got. You go to other things and you see the black vendors, it's all nice, it's all laid out, it's all big and professional. Now the black conscious community, the motherfuckers that know every goddamn thing, you go and they events and look at the shit. It look like a junk, it look like a junk sale. That's one reason I had to stop vending. They let all them Africans come with all that junk, and then everybody just started bringing it and making it look like a junk fest. It wasn't, with my booth, I used to have it set up. So we don't have no professionalism about ourselves no more. We're not taking it up, up, up. It's supposed to have went up. And you just can't go and just get no fucking table, put out there and throw no t-shirts out there and sell them, put the money in your pocket and run around. You got to, they got to come and see your booth. It's got to be impressive. But you know, we just not professional. And it's like anytime the, the conscious side, you know, and I, this is why I'm getting on y'all, because when you're a black conscious, you're supposed to be the supreme elite of the community. You're supposed to be the elite. So now you got to carry yourself like the elite and you got to have elite plans, not low level plans. This is why the rest of the black community don't fuck with y'all because they trying to go up and they look at y'all. You know, if a black businessman come out to a black culture event and he look at that junk out there, what make him want to fuck with you? That's why when you see they have these these big black um, economic summits, when you go there 
and you see the vendors and how it is, it's always on a higher level than when you go to black countries events. Even the events are on a higher level, more put into the event. Black, there is no really uh, elegant black countries events, seriously. It's always dusty. I mean, it's, it's a thing where a person will get a nice place, but the way the vendors are always set up, it looks like fucking 1921. And that's just one of many examples how, you know, we're not going to the next level. It's time to go to the next level. This is just that simple. We're going to need black conscious dentists. We're going to need black conscious doctors, lawyers, politicians, and mainly politicians. Because the, the, the police officers, the black police officers, the black doctors, the black lawyers, all of them are stuck under a political system. Until you know that, you ain't got a chance in hell. It's a political system. Everything falls under politics. Your health care, your water. You see the po politics in Flint? The politics, the black politics in Flint was weak. That's why they was drinking brown water. So I'm telling you, step your game up. Let other people be afraid of uh, the black politicians. You black people, you got to stop being afraid of politics because it's a word that people use, poly. Poly mean many and ticks mean bloodsuckers. We know that. But at the same time, just because that's what's in there don't mean that's what's got to be in there. You can go and make a change. If you see that the politicians are all bloodsuckers, then that means get some politicians that ain't blood suckers. You just ain't gonna sit there and let them motherfuckers keep sucking your blood, though. Listen to these parting words from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says, by now, it should be ever so clear that politics will no more solve our problem than it did the difficulties facing Israel during her bondage in Egypt. We have come to the brink of extinction. I had the team look up the word it means we're about to be completely annihilated. That's right. And the plan is in action as we speak. That's right. That's right. Then Elijah Muhammad wrote, we must hear and now make an agonizing reappraisal of our way of life if we care anything for ourselves, our lives, our people, the future of our properties, our wives, and our children. Everyone that's listening, everyone that's watching, and we thank the radio stations. I don't think you could have stayed with me three hours, but if you did, boy, <laughs> you have filled your audience with a lot of knowledge. But dear brothers and sisters, if we care anything, we must make this agonizing reappraisal of our way of life. We are contributing to our extinction as a people by the way we live our lives. What you eat for food is part of your extinction. What you drink for drinks is a part of the plan for your extinction. Your inordinate sex drive 
which causes you to do crazy things that will endanger your life. Everything that we are doing, we just got to stop and look at it. And if you love yourself, if you love our lives, our people, and the future of our wives and children and the future of our properties, we got to change.